Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. In this video, I want to discuss al mashu al al wiping over the two leather socks. al khuf is the traditional animal skin. al khuf is the traditional animal skin that people of the past used to wear on their feet. And that was before the advent of leather. Today, the entire shoe industry has been taken over by leather and it likes. But back in the days, it was strictly animal skin. It is permitted in Islam to wipe over this hoof, as we call it, the hoof, when one performs ablution. The evidence is in the Quran, Quran chapter 5 or 6. Allah SWT says, Ya ayyuhallavina amanu idha kumtum ila salah faksilu wujuhakum wa aidiyakum ila almarafi. Oh, you have believed when you stand up for salah, wash your faces and your hands to the elbows. وَمْسَحُوا بِرُؤُوسِكُمْ وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ And wipe over your head and your feet. The scholars of Kiraat have recited this particular word in two ways. Some of them recite it as وَأَرْجُلَكُمْ which means that it goes with فَاكْسِلُوا وُجُوهَكُمْ Wash your faces and wash your feet and which is why we wash our feet. Uh, in the other way, it can also be recited as Wamsahu biruusikum wa arjulikum. Wipe over your head and your feet. And this recitation is what the Fukaha have mentioned as evidence for the wiping over the Hufayn. So they say if you recite it as wa arjulikum, it connotes wiping over the two Huf. As for the Sunnah, evidence abounds in the Sunnah of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa that he wiped over his hoofs and commanded the Sahaba to also wipe over the hoof. It is recorded in Bukhari and Muslim on the authority of Al Mughira ibn Shu'ba, who said, Kuntu ma an Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam adhata laylatin fi masirin. I was with the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam one night on a journey. Fa afuragutu alayhi min al idawa. So I poured water for him from the goat skin. Fa wasala wadiyahu. So he washed his face and washed his hands to the elbows. And then he wiped over his head. So when Prophet wiped over his head, I immediately made attempt to remove his hoofs. The Prophet said to me, Leave the hoofs. I wore them while I was in a state of purity. So he wiped over his hoof. It is also mentioned by Sufwan bin Asal who said, The Messenger of Allah وسلم, commanded us to wipe over the two hoofs. If we wore them while in a state of purity. For three days and night, if we were on a journey, and for a day and night, if we were resident. He also commanded us to not remove our hoof in this situation unless if we were sexually defiled. It is mentioned by uh, Ibn al Munzir that Al Hassan al Basri said, ta'ala, not less than 70 companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi sallam, told me. That Prophet Islam used to wipe over his two hooves. Akhbarani sabu'un min ashabi Rasulillah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam anahu masal al khufayn. Seventy companions of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam told me personally that he wiped over his two hooves. To the extent that Ibn Daqiq al Aid mentioned in his Ihkam al Ahkam that wiping over the two hooves have become the identity of the Ahlu Sunnah such that anyone who negates wiping over the hoofs is seen as a person of innovation. And this is a common opinion according to the Shia and the Khawarij. So these are the proofs from the Quran and Sunnah that wiping over the hoof is permitted in the Sharia. Now let's go to the second issue. What constitutes hoof? I don't want to double into the argument among the ulama concerning whether the name hoof only applies to the um, goat skin or leather socks and does not apply to the socks made of cotton, among other things. I align myself with the opinion that whatever is worn over the foot 
which covers it up to the ankle qualifies for al-khuf. So this is the opinion that I align myself with. But the scholars have mentioned that there are conditions that make what one wears over his foot uh, permissible for wiping. Number one is that it must be worn in a state of purity. This is based on the hadith of al mughira bin Shamba, earlier quoted. That is, you must have performed ablution uh, in the first instance, then you wear the hoof after that, so that whenever you intend to perform ablution for that day as, um, as a resident, or for three days and for three nights as a traveler, you continue to wipe over the hoof. Number two is that the material must be made of something that is pure and clean. The scholars have divided opinions concerning the leathers that have been made from animals that are not permitted for consumption, such as pig and dog. There is a general hadith from Abdullah ibn Abbas that Prophet Salama said, Ayyuma ihabin dubiga faqadi tawhura. Nanda riwaya idha dubiga li ihabu faqadi tawhura. Once a skin is tanned, then it is pure. Some of the ulama said this only applies to the skin of dead animals that are permitted for consumption. As for the skins of pigs and um, dogs and other animals not permitted for consumption, then it does not fall under this hadith. The second opinion is that this hadith says, Ayuma, any skin that is tanned, which means irrespective of the nature of the animal. But what seems to be more correct, Allah Ta'ala Adam, is the opinion of the Jumuhu Ulama, that it is not permitted to use the skins of uh, animals that are not permitted for consumption uh, as uh, leathers that will be wiped over during ablution. If the leather of the hoof is made of animals that are not permitted for consumption, such as pig and dogs and the likes, then it should not be wiped over ihtiyatun to be on a safer side. The fourth condition is that it must be clean itself, that is, it must not bear any impurity. And the evidence is that one the Messiah of Allah was leading the companions in Salah and was wearing a shoe. All of a sudden, he removed the shoe and the companions also removed their shoes. After the Salah, he asked them, why did you remove your shoes? They said, because we saw you removing yours. And he said, no, Jibreel came to me and told me that my shoe has a dirt underneath of it. That was why I removed it. So it is permitted to wipe over the hoof if it bears no impurity. Another condition is that it must cover the entire area required for washing, and that is the foot and the ankle area. So if the hoof does not cover this area, it cannot be wiped over. It has to cover the area. So these are some of the conditions mentioned by the ulama. Now let's go to the next issue, which is how do we wipe over the hoof? Now, here I'm going to perform ablution and simulate how wiping over the hoof is to be done. Bismillah. So this is how to wipe over the hoof. The wiping is once, and some of the scholars have mentioned that it should be done with both hands at the same time, like this. You start from the toes, and you wipe them off, up to the shin area, and this is how it should be wiped. So we wipe the upper part of the hoof, and not the lower part, because according to Ali Odella Ta'ala Anihu, he said, Lauka na dinu bi ra'yi, if religion were a matter of reasoning, lakana asfal lukhufi awla bil mashi min ala. The underneath of the hoof would have been more worthy of being wiped than the top. But lakodu ra'aytu nabiya sallallahu alayhi wa sallam yam sahu ala ala khufayhi. I saw the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam wipe only over the top of the hoof. In case one does not have the hoof, then it is also permitted to wipe over socks if one were wearing socks. 
But I said the condition is that one must have performed a valid ablution beforehand. So if one has performed ablution for, say, the Zul prayer, and he wore his socks or the hoof, and it's time for answering prayer, he may not remove the socks if he likes. He only has to wipe over the socks. So let's try the socks. Here is the socks being worn. Like this. So if one were wearing a socks and he tends to perform ablution, all he has to do is to wipe over the socks like this. So the wiping can be done at once. It can also be done separately. So one can wipe the right and then wipe the left. But I allow myself with the opinion that you should wipe both at the same time, the right and the left at the same time. Now, it is also possible that one were wearing a shoe. So let's assume that one were wearing a shoe. Now, if you look at this shoe, if one were wearing this shoe alone, it doesn't cover the ankle area. This area is exposed. So you cannot wipe over this shoe. But if one were wearing the shoe uh, with the socks, so here is the shoe and the socks. Like this, like this. And one wants to wipe over the shoe. Then he can do it like this, wipe over a part of the shoe, then complete it on the socks, and you can go and pray like this. In case you want to pray in the shoes, no problem is permitted to pray in the shoe, so long as the shoe carries no impurity underneath. So you can go inside the masjid or outside the masjid there to perform a salat with his shoe on. But if he intends to take off the shoe, then he can also take off the shoe and pray with his socks on. But if he should remove his socks after having wiped over it, then he would need to perform another ablution washing his feet before he would be able to wipe over his socks. But the ablution that he performed earlier is valid. He can use it for solar, except that he cannot repeat the wiping over the socks unless he has performed another ablution in which he washed his feet. Now, in case one were wearing a soccer boot, it is also possible that one was playing football and it was time for solar, and he wants to perform ablution, observe his solar while wearing his soccer, soccer boot. Then if the soccer boot is one that covers his ankles, just like this one, or if it doesn't cover the ankle but he were wearing his socks on his feet, then he can also wipe over it. But let's assume that the, the soccer boot is like this, which covers the ankle area then you can simply wipe over the soccer boot like this. And then it goes to pray. So it is permitted to do this. And in case you were wearing a military boot, it's also permitted if the condition uh, is satisfied. And that is the boot is made of a leather of, a, of an animal whose meat is permitted for consumption. It bears no impurity and it covers the ankle area. For a shoe like this, it doesn't cover the ankle area, so one would need to wear a socks underneath before you'll be able to wipe over the shoes. And in case someone were wearing a sandal like this and he doesn't want to remove it while performing ablution, he can also wipe over it so long as he's wearing a pair of socks. So all he has to do is to wet his hand with water and wipe over the sandal and the socks all together and it doesn't affect his purity even if he removes the sander to observe solar so long as he does not remove his socks now if he removes his socks before observing solar his ablution is still valid except that he would not be able to wipe over the socks again at the next ablution he has to remove the socks and wash his feet but for someone that's wearing a pair of slippers like this or any other pair of slippers for that matter it's the same thing. All he has to do is to ensure he's wearing his socks underneath. And we are, in the time of Amatan, many people actually um, are afraid of um, exposing their feet. So all they have to do is to wet their hand with water and wipe over the sander and the socks all together. 
and it doesn't affect their ablution even if they remove their sandals to perform solar. But if they remove their socks before observing solar, the ablution is valid still, except that they will not be able to wipe over the socks at the next ablution unless after washing the feet completely. For someone that is resident, it is permitted for him after performing ablution in which he washes his feet to wipe over his shoes and um, boots and socks for 24 hours. That is, if he started the, um, wiping over at 3 p.m. this afternoon, then until 3 p.m. tomorrow, before he has to remove his shoes or um, socks and wash his feet again to continue the wiping. So you can continue the wiping after you have removed um, your shoe or socks and wash your feet. That is after 24 hours, and then you continue like that and like that. But for someone that is on the journey, then for 72 hours, he may continue to wipe over his shoes and socks if, number one, he did not remove the shoe or socks that he has wiped over. The moment he removes it, then he has to perform another ablution in which he would have to wash his feet. Secondly, he must not bear an impurity that requires him to take a Janaba bath. If he has to take a Janaba bath, then he cannot wipe over the hoof. He has to take the shower, remove the hoof, then perform an uh, ablution in which he has to wash his feet before he can continue um, the wiping over again. As for women who are in a state of um, hide or nifas, they cannot wipe over their hoof because they are bearing a major impurity, just like someone that uh, carries Janamba. So this is that about wiping over the hoof. I hope this helps.